My name is Sister Maria Battista Pia Mathuris of the Child Jesus. How is it being back in America for the first time in 11 years? <laughs> <laughs> it's a... Uh, it's amazing there. There's a lot of things that have changed as well as my as my family. Everybody's gotten older and and taller and um, and um, this being I'm living I'm reliving so many memories, I could basically say. I have I have seven nephews now. <laughs> <laughs> and and um, a couple of them were a bit afraid of me at first because I, because they've never probably seen a sister dressed like me, you know, and but um, really very very soon they 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 warmed up to me and and uh, and I really fell in love with all of them. <laughs> Can imagine? Yeah, I yes. bet. And where are you originally from? Well, uh, I I grew up in in uh, South Waverly, Pennsylvania, near the New York border, but when. Uh, when I was 15, uh, my family came to uh, the Binghamton area, and so that's where I, that's where my family is now. Where are your parents from? My dad grew up in New Jersey, and then and then my mom was an hour from from Sarah. She lived in, in uh, upstate New York as well. How many siblings do you have? I have I have eight siblings, so we're nine all together. And where do you fall in line? I'm the second. The second oldest. Second, the oldest daughter, though. Did you grow up Catholic? I definitely did, and I'm so grateful to my family for this, and especially uh, getting to know all the saints. And I, I think really that that's what helped me a lot, is because uh, also uh, it, it gives you the desire to become a saint if you if you are if you know about the saints. So. And and do you feel your your mother and your father both equally help to ignite that fire in you for your faith. Yes, I do because um, actually they 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 were converted together because um, when my oldest older brother was born, uh, they they both wanted to do the best for their children, and so they they discovered the faith together. My dad was a fallen away Catholic, and my mom had never been baptized. But they wanted they wanted the best for their children, and so they they discovered the faith together, and then they they've been very uh, strong in their faith ever since. How old were you when you really felt that you were taking your faith seriously? Well, I I, I always loved my faith. Like uh, I remember when I made my first communion, I I really I was really happy about it, but. Of course, I was young, and I didn't. I wasn't really serious. Serious, of course. I think the the turning point was when I was twelve. I I received the brown scapular for the first time, and my dad had told us that if we wanted to be a true child of Our Lady, we had to act like one. And so, I I really think that was that was a big turning point in my in my spiritual life that. I wanted to to make Our Lady proud of me, you know. How old were you when you considered becoming a sister? I had always liked the idea, like when I read stories about the saints. But um, I was when I was eleven. I read a, a book. Uh, it's called A Right to Be Mary uh, by a poor clericality nun. It, it was about cloistered nuns, but uh, Franciscans, and there was there was a lot of uh, other 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 um, signs previously that that really drew me to the to the idea of becoming a sister, but um, that was that was probably the when I read that book that I, I really made a big impression on me, and I. I wanted to be not only a sister, but I wanted to be a Franciscan sister. What drew you to that? The whole, the simplicity of the Franciscan life, and the and the the way that it's there, it's like a it's like a family, and then the the Franciscan joy because 
uh, it's it's pretty special. Uh, Franciscans are are really simple and 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 full of joy. You know? I can see that. I can definitely see the joy. We do have a lot of fun together. We, in fact, one of one of my one one of the, our mother superiors, she she said that she'd never had so much fun as when she had in the convent, like outside. Uh, she did have fun with her friends, but really and truly, uh, that 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 really strong joy with mm -hmm. with so much peace in your heart and everything. She she said, that, and then, and then also because we have fun together, we do. We have recreation. We have yeah. And I did. <laughs> but <laughs> I, we spoke before the interview, and I did experience some time in a convent when I was in Italy with my sister. And you're right, it was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And there's just such a strong sense of sisterhood yes. and, and joy overall, for sure. Yes. It's a very fun time. Did you also consider being a wife or a mother? Well, obviously, because I saw my mom, how, how beautiful her, her, her uh, witness was as a, as a wonderful wife and mother. I, mm, I obviously thought about it. It is a beautiful vocation, mm -hmm. and I, I, I know how important it is for, for to have good Catholic families. How did you meet the sisters of the Franciscans of the Immaculate? Well, when I was twelve, um, there was this this group of four girls uh, going to visit our sisters in Massachusetts, and. Um, one of our one of our priests, Father Maximilian, he invited me because he had probably heard. I don't I don't remember how he had heard of it, but I'm sure probably my mom and dad had, had told him that I was discerning, and so he invited me. I was only 12, but I was pretty tall, so I was about the size of the other girls, and so and so I went I went and I met them for a weekend. It was only a weekend, but when I came back home. I told my mom, Mom, I'm sure that this is it. This is going to be my life. Wow. And that was right around the time that you had read that book that really About a year afterwards. Yeah. About a year afterwards. Wow. Wow, mm. that's incredible. How old were you when you actually entered? I was 16. You were 16 years old. I, I, I went back every year after, after I met the sisters for the first time. I went back every year uh, to to spend time with them, and then I graduated when I was 16. I got my diploma, high school diploma, uh, because I because I was homeschooled. I had I was two years ahead from when I was little. I had always been two years ahead, mm -hmm. and so I graduated when I was 16. And and my mom and dad gave me permission. Because you need permission if you're not 18 yet, okay. and they gave me permission to to enter as soon as I had finished school, and so I entered on August 22nd, 2007. Wow! And how did your parents respond when you said, "This is what I want to do," and you were officially asking them for their permission to enter? They were both very happy about it, even though my mom was well, she suffered a lot because we were very close, because I was the oldest daughter. Um, but my dad, of course, was very happy about it, and um, I remember, uh, I remember the day he gave me his blessing uh, a couple months before uh, I entered, and he was always thinking about it. And so one day he asked me, "So when are you going to leave?" And I I told him about when, and then and then he said, "Well, I give you my blessing." Wow. That was probably a pretty emotional and exciting moment for you. Definitely. How did you get the name Maria Battista Pia? Uh, you can suggest uh, a name that you would like to be called. I just thought that um, just like when, when you're born, your parents give you your name. Mm -hmm. I, wanted, I wanted God to give me my name. And so I, I kind of left it up to, uh, to my superiors. The mother, the mother superior, told me afterwards. She said, she didn't tell me the name yet because I only knew about it when I was actually uh, before the altar. But um, she told me that it was a very unusual name, 
because in Italy it's a it's a boy's name. And but she told me I hope you like it, and and I really did. Where have you lived since entering the Franciscans of the Immaculate? Well, I entered in Indiana, and after about a year, I went to New Bedford, Massachusetts, for um, uh, for my postulancy, and then. Uh, in 2012, I went to Italy, and I, I stayed at the. There's a couple different uh, houses of formation there, and after I made my vows, I went to Trent, which is up north in the Alps. After a year, I was that I was there. I was sent to San Giovanni Rotondo, the where Father Pio is, the shrine of Father Pio, and I've been there for eight years now. Do you feel a draw to work in America? The place that you came from. I do. Mm, I know. I know. There's so much, so much good to be done here, and so many, so many souls to save. Um, especially, especially seeing it, seeing it uh, uh, up close in these couple last couple of weeks. But I know that um, we belong to Our Lady. She can. Uh, give graces to souls um, with with, uh, with our with our prayers and sacrifices from from so far away she can help souls here as well even if i if i am uh, in another mission where she needs me so what do you do as a franciscan of the immaculate well it's san giovanni rotondo we we have the apostle of singing for the holy masses and three of them every day, uh, they they go on live for uh, Padre Pio TV, which is which is uh, a national um, television station that um, is very very much um, followed by many people. And as many people have come to tell us, we touch many hearts with, with these just just um, making the mass more beautiful. How would you describe your personal spiritual life? Basically, living under the same roof with Jesus and Mary is because uh, it makes it makes everything different. Uh, and then and then just trying to please them in all we do. Mm -hmm. So, what do you focus on mostly throughout your day as you're working? Mm. The, this the will the will of God for in every moment uh, with with a pure intention that to to, to to love to grow in the love of God and to save souls with whatever we do and what does your daily schedule look like it's a bit different in San Giovanni Rotondo, but uh, in general we um, we do we do three hours of prayer including the mass in the morning and then we, we have breakfast and then we, we work, we do housework, we do, we do a pasta in the morning. And then around, um, around one, uh, we, uh, after a short prayer, we, we have lunch together. We have a holy hour in the afternoon and another, another bit of a pasta or, or housework. And, um, also some studying. Uh, like um, we 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 have to uh, practice organ because we sing for the masses, okay. and then we also have uh, we study catechism, we study other, we study about Our Lady, we study a lot of things, mm -hmm. and so there's time for that too. And then and then we have dinner towards eight o'clock usually, and and your schedule is pretty consistent throughout the week. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Why? Is devotion to Mary so important? It's important because God wanted it that way, because he 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 he, he chose to come to this earth because of through Our Lady with a mother. He wanted he chose to have a mother. He didn't come as an adult, and and then he gave his mother to us from the cross. It's also important uh, on a, on a, a psychological level. Because um, cause we need both a father and a mother. Every person has a father and a mother. And so we have God as our father, 
but we need Mary as our mother, and, and, and God knew that. How do you practically live out devotion to the Blessed Virgin? I really think that every house should have a, should have a, a statue or a, an image of Our Lady, and to 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 remind to remind us of of her presence and, and her love for us. Very good thing to to pray the Rosary every day, because um, that is a uh, is a devotion that she asked for, and and it shows that she really she really uh, considers it very important. We should, if we can, read something about her every now and then and get to know her better because it, sh it shouldn't be just a vague thing like like she's she's a very beautiful person and she's the mother of Jesus and our mother and, and it's that's all because uh, Our Lady is very important also to to God and, 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 and for us and so if we could get to know more about her mm -hmm. and we would love her more and then we would uh, ask ourselves uh, how Our Lady would do this, do what I'm doing. What, what would she think? What would, what would she like me to do? Yeah, and I, I like what you said earlier that the Blessed Mother is a very real person and to realize that and to learn more about her um, could really help to bring you much closer. Yes. I love that. As a woman, how do you deal with the built-in draw towards being a wife or mother? Well, uh, as I said, uh, sisters are a spouse of Christ. If you read some of the lives of the women saints, they really live uh, that attitude of, of being um, a spouse, a bride of Christ. When we become sisters, our family becomes the whole world. And, and so, we, we need we need like like in our apostolate with helping helping souls to come closer to God and and comforting them and and praying for them and trying to encourage them it is it is a motherly thing what advice would you give to young women on how to discern a call to religious life it's it's obvious that that God God gives us this because you cannot be a sister you cannot you cannot even be a mother if you're not called to it, because it's 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 a it's every it's both of them are vocations. Every person has a mission. God God uh, wants from them. So we should uh, listen to God's voice in our heart, and what 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 He would like from us. Uh, Saint Francis used to used to ask ask God, Lord, what would you have me do? Uh, first of all, reading the lives of the saints who were sisters. Or there's also saints who were mothers, and and so uh, seeing where 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 your heart draws you more, and then um, and then uh, spending time with with our Lord, especially it would it would be the best thing to do some some adoration at least once a week, and and to to open your heart to God, whatever He He wants of you, and then and then it's it's obvious that. That you can uh, you can always uh, come and visit some 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 orders of sisters. You mm -hmm. can always check out, and that that also that also will really help you in your discernment. Absolutely. What would you say to young women who feel God might be calling them to religious life as a sister, but prefer to choose the life that they want instead? Every one of us fits into God's plan. We can choose to not follow God's plan, to follow our own, but um, we will not have all the graces that God wanted to give us for 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 our mission if we, if we don't follow His plan. And that's where we will find our true joy, and that's that's where we will we will be able to give give our whole selves uh, with with the grace of God and to accomplish our mission. I love that and I feel like today there's so much noise and chaos and pressure to be, um, especially for young women, to be independent and you know very career oriented. Do you have any advice for young women to um, make that silent space so they can really discern what they're being called to do amidst the 
the noise that we seem to be surrounded by. Uh, we have a strong aversion to silence nowadays. We, we always have to have the radio or the television or the internet or the cell phone. Always, always doing something. Always, we don't, we don't, we don't. Uh, we need silence. We really do to hear the voice of God. And so, like, uh, it would be a very good idea to do an hour of adoration at least once a week. Uh, Saint Saint Joseph Miscati. He didn't know what his vocation was going to be. As a young man, he he went away from home on a retreat, and he. He prayed 100 rosaries to Our Lady to ask her to tell him what he, what God wanted him to be, because he didn't know before. And and when 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 he had finished this retreat, uh, he was absolutely certain that he had to be a doctor, a lay a layman and a doctor. He didn't get married, but he became a saint as a doctor. So we have to find a vocation because mm -hmm. every every one of us has has this mission. And, and so it, we have to pray. We have to pray and we have to be, be silent. Yes, Make definitely. Time for that silence. Retreats are very good. Mm -hmm. Is it possible to live a life full of self-sacrifice and still be super happy? Well, it definitely is. If, if, uh, and, and that's actually where happiness can be found. Because if you, if you, uh, if you if you just um, do whatever you want and you're very selfish, um, you can never be happy. The, the word joy, uh, if you if you separate it into 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 three letters, uh, Jesus, others, yourself, and if you have have this in order, you will be happy. You will have real joy. The only way you can you can be happy with uh, sacrificing yourself is if you love what you're doing. Um, when I first entered the convent, um, I remember that my my mother superior asked me um, if I was having difficulties. And I learned very quickly by my own experience that um, the only, uh, everything becomes easy, whatever difficult, however difficult it is, everything becomes easy if you have love in your heart. And so that's one of the reasons why we need to find our vocation, because then we will be able to give ourselves uh, with all the sacrifices it costs with all our heart. <laughs>